welcome to Technology and Livelihood Education video lesson. So for today's most essential learning competency, we have prepare sauces for required menu items. Learning objectives, we have number one, classify various types of sauces. Number two, we have to identify the types of thickening agents and convenience products used in preparing sauces. And number three, we have to identify and deal with problems in the preparation of sauces. Before we start, are you familiar with the game Wordscapes? Wherein, you will unjumble the letters to make a new one. Let's try! Okay, what did you discover on the priming activity? Very good. Those are the brands of the famous sauces and condiments in our country. Okay, what can you observe in the pictures? So basically, these are sauces and dips that are um, common in our um, country or in our locality. So first we have the soy sauce. And then, um, the Mang Tomas. So, lagi natin yung ginagamit kapag tayo ay mga, mga lechon, lechon manok, or something. And then, um, we also have the Bagoong. So, original, originally, Bagoong was originated in the northern part of Pangasinan. Next, we have the different Filipino-style sauces, in, in which I know every one of you is familiar with. Let us look at the first picture. We have the famous toyo sili with bawang and sibuyas next we have the fishbowl sauce in which i know every one of you is familiar most especially in eating um street foods next we have the spaghetti sauce which everyone loves next we have the toyo suka combination and lastly we have the lechon manok sauce okay how does sauces contribute to the taste of a certain dish? Let us find out. Sauces. One of the important components of a dish is the sauce. Sauces serve a particular function in the composition of a dish. This enhances the taste of the food to be served as well as adds moisture or succulents to the food that are cooked dry. First, we have to define what is the meaning of sauce. So, sauce, um, in general, is a flavorful liquid, usually thickened, that is used to season, flavor, and enhance other foods. It adds on the moist, moistness, flavor, richness, appearance, such as the color and the shine of the dish, and then appeal. So these are primarily the um, function of sauces. Sabi nga sa kanta, Kulang ako kung wala ka Hindi ako mabubuo Hindi kita kasama So ganun din po sa sauce. So kung wala ang sauce, hindi magiging masarap o hindi mabubuo ang lasa ng isang dish. Okay, we have the variation of sauces. We have number one, we have the hot sauce. So hot sauce is made just before they are to be used. Okay, and then the next one is cold sauce. Cold sauce is cooked ahead of time, then cooled, covered, and placed in a refrigerator to chill. So one of the example of cold sauces is the salad dressing and mayonnaise. We have the five basic sauces for meat, vegetables, and fish. We have first, we have the white sauce. So basically, it is called white sauce because its appearance is color white. So its basic ingredient is milk, which is thickened with flour and rich with butter. Next, we have 
velut sauce. So its chief ingredients are veal, chicken and fish broth, thickened with bland roux. Okay, we have the word there spelled as R-O-U-X. So in cookery terms, it is pronounced as roux. Okay, so later on, we will discuss what is roux. Okay, number three, we have hollandaise. So hollandaise, it is a rich emulsified sauce made from butter, egg yolks, lemon juice, and cayenne. Number four, we have the brown sauce. So it is a brown roux-based sauce made with margarine or butter flavor and brown stock. Last one, we have tomato sauce. So it is made from stock such as ham or pork and tomato products seasoned with spices and herbs, which I know tomato sauce um, is very familiar to every one of us. We are now done discussing the different variation of sauces. So at this point, we will um, know how these sauces are made. So let us watch this video. is made so based from the video presented or shown to you what thickening agents was used in making the velut sauce very good so let us now discuss the different thickening agents used in making sauce so let us first um, define what is a thickening agent so thickening agent Thickens sauce to the right consistency. The sauce must be thick enough to clean light to cling lightly to the food. Okay, so we use thickening agents in order for the sauce to cling or to um, stick on the um, food.
food or on the dish. The most popular thickening agent or the most common use thickening agent in use in cooking sauces or in the preparation of sauces is the starches. Okay, so starch granules are separated in two ways. Number one, by mix by mixing the starch with fat. So one of the example of this is the roux. Okay, so next one is the is through mixing the starch with a cold liquid. Example of this is the slurry. Okay. Next one. So, dito na papasok yung tinatawag nating roux. So, ano nga ba ang roux? Say roux, it is a cooked mixture of equal parts by weight of fat and flour. Okay. So, the first thickening agent that is um commonly used is the so there are different kinds or types of fat that we are using in the preparation or in making sauces so first we have the clarified butter so in using clarified butter this results to finest sauces because of its flavor so if you want your sauces to be the most finest one so we use the clarified butter next we have the margarine so margarine is used as a as a substitute for butter because of its lower cost. So, I know every one of you naman is familiar of margarine. So, kung wala tayong butter, so margarine ang ginagamit natin. So, bukod sa, pwede siyang i-substitute sa butter, mas lower pa yung kanyang presyo. Next, we have the animal fat. So, animal fat, it is the fat coming from chicken, beef drippings, and Lard. So, as you can observe, pag butter ang ginamit natin, yellow yung color niya. So, pag naman animal fat, white yung kanyang kulay. Next, we have the vegetable oil and shortening. So, it can be used for raw, but it adds no flavor. So, pwede natin siyang gamitin as our fat in making sauces, pero wala siyang additional flavor sa ating sauces. Okay, so the next thickening agent that is used in making sauces is the flour. So, I know every one of you naman is familiar with the flour. Okay, so the thickening power of flour depends on its starch content. So, bread flour is commonly used in commercial cooking. So, it is sometimes browned for use in brown roux, heavily Brown flour has only one third the thickening power of not brown flour. So suggested na gamitin natin kapag tayo ay nag or nagpe prepare ng sauces is the bread flour. Okay, so na discuss natin kanina yung roux. So sabi dito, di ba kanina explanation natin ng roux is the combination of fat and flour. So, it is said that a roux must be cooked so that the sauce does not have a raw, starchy flour taste. So, the kinds of roux differ on how much they are cooked. So, may iba't iba tayong kinds ng roux. So, depende sa kung paano sila na luto. Okay? So, number one, we have the white roux. So, cook just enough to cook the raw taste of flour. Used for bechamel and other white sauces based on milk. Okay? So, that, um, that's why it is white roux because meron siyang kahalo na milk or ingredient na milk. Next, we have the bland roux. So, it is cooked a little longer to a slightly darker color used for velutes. Okay? So, pag velute sauce naman ang ang ginagamit is the bland roux. So, medyo matagal yung process ng pagluto niya compared to white roux. Okay, next, we have the brown roux. So, cook to a light brown color and a nutty aroma. Flour may be browned before adding to the fat. So, it, co it contributes flavor and color to brown sauces. So, ang brown, ang Brown roux naman ay ginagamit natin sa brown sauces. Okay?
while ago, I have shown to you the process or a sample video of the preparation of velut sauce. So, in making or in the preparation of sauces, we may encounter different problems. So, let us know or let us discover the common problems that we may encounter in preparing sauces. Okay, so here are the common problems in sauce. Number one, we have the lumpiness. So, this is usually the effect if the sauce is too dry and then additional liquid is added. Adding too much liquid and then it is added quickly. Then incorrect temperature of the roux and liquid. Next, we have poor gloss. So, this happens when the sauce is insufficiently cooked. Next, we have incorrect consistency. It is the result when there is incorrect balance in the formula. This also happens when the sauce is overcooked. So, kung yung poor gloss insufficiently cooked, yung sauce, sa incorrect consistency naman, overcooked. Okay, next we have poor color. So, this results when we are using dirty utensils and incorrect cooking causes causes poor color of the sauce and then last i and then next we have the raw starch flavor so starch is insufficiently cooked and then last one we have the bitterness okay sa mga bitter jan we have bitterness so this results when it's ha it happens when the roux is over browned, burned, or overcooked. Let me share to you the hygienic principles and practices in sauce making. So, number one, make sure all equipment is perfectly clean. Next, hold sauce no longer than one and a half hours. Make only enough to serve in this time and discard any that is left over next never mix an old batch of sauce with a new batch okay so kailangan nating tandaan yung mga um tips na yon so that hindi masayang yung ating ginawa or prepare nating sauce so i think every one of you is um ready for our exercises or for our activity so, number activity number one, you have to identify the chief ingredients of the following sauces. So, we have there brown sauce, emulsion, hollandaise, tomato, velut sauce, and white sauce. So, in the other column, we have the chief ingredients. Okay? So, next activity, we have... So, you have to tell whether the following statement is true or false. Okay, so we have number 7. So, this is just a continuation of the activity 1. Number 7, true or false. Starches are the most commonly used thickeners for sauce making. Number 2, or number 8. Cold sauces are made just before they are, they are served. Number nine, roux is a cooked mixture of unequal parts of fat and flour. Number ten, the kind of roux differ on how much they are cooked. Number eleven, bland, bland roux is used for brown sauces. Number 12, reduction is used to adjust the texture and add new flavors. Number 13, straining produces a smooth and lump-free sauce. Number 14, heavy cream gives extra shine and smoothness to the sauce. Number 15, the thickening power of flour depends on its starch content. Let's find out if your answers are correct.
So, to sum it all up, we have now the generalization. So, what are the basic sauces for meat, fish, and vegetables? What are the different thickening agents used in making sauces? How does sauces affect the taste of a certain dish? And why is it important to add sauces, especially when the dish is dry? Alright, for our evaluation, so um, letter A, you have to classify the following Filipino style sauces as to letter A, cold sauce, B, white sauce, C, brown sauce. So we have their mayonnaise, fishball sauce, vinaigrette, baguong, and carbonara sauce. Letter B, you have to identify the thickening agent described in the sentence. Number one, what thickening agent is commonly used in commercial cooking and sometimes browned for use in brown sauces? Number two, used a substitute for butter because of its lower cost. Number three, example of this thickening agent is chicken fat, beef dripping, and lard. Number four, it is used or it is used or finest sauces for finest sauces because of its flavor. And number five, it is the most commonly used thickeners for sauce making. And letter C, listed below are the problems we encounter in making sauces. So in case you encounter these problems, what solutions would you make to make the sauce presentable? So these are the problems. You have lumpiness, poor gloss, incorrect consistency, poor color, and bitterness. Okay, for your assignment, make a research on at least 10 sauces and the food where it is commonly used in the Philippines. And then, te and then 10 from different countries. Include pictures and descriptions. Okay, so that ends our discussion for today. Thank you very much for listening. This has been Ma'am Carla Samar, your grade 10 TLE teacher.